In this video, I explain how you can start using DynaPDF. But first, what is DynaPDF? With DynaPDF, you get functionalities, for example, to create, edit, merge, initialize, or sign PDF files with Sojo. With DynaPDF, you can, for example, write an invoice for your customer in which you integrate a barcode with payment information and attach the always same terms and conditions to the PDF document. This invoice can also be converted to PDFA for archiving purposes. If you want to use the classes of DynaPDF in Sudo, you need a suitable license of DynaPDF and the MBS Sudo DynaPDF plugin. There are four different licenses for DynaPDF. Which license you need depends strongly on which methods you plan to use. For example, if you only want to insert the links in a new PDF document, a starter license is sufficient. If you also want to add a page to an existing PDF document, you need a light license. If you want to read images from existing PDF files, or import single PDF pages from another PDF document, you need a professional license. With the additional PDFA converter license, you get the possibility to convert already existing documents from PDF to PDFA. All MBS Dyna PDF licenses can be used for Sojo, FileMaker, C, C++, C Sharp, Delphi, Lazarus, PHP, Weeby, VBA and VB.net. I want to show you an example that uses Dana PDF functionalities. In this example, we want to create a new PDF and write a text in the upper right corner. If we want to work with Dana PDF, we first need a class that has a class Dana PDF MBS as superclass. Here we can, for example, define different outputs of the error event. To make it easier, you can copy the My Dyna PDF MBS class from an example project and adjust it to your needs. Here we see our example projects. Open one. And here is the My Dyna PDF MBS class. We copy it. And insert it. In the methods or events in which you want to work with Dyna PDF, I want to use the open event. You have to create an instance of this class for a new PDF environment. You can then perform the appropriate operations on this object. But before we list all the steps that build the PDF, we first have to initialize Dyna PDF and enter our license code. For this, we use the method setLicenseKey from the Dyna PDF MBS class. In the parameters, we can set then our license key. If we are in demo mode and we do not have a license key, we can simply leave the parameters blank. In this case, all classes and methods are available in demo mode, which means that the PDF will be displayed with a text printed on it, but you can see what the methods do. If you want to test if your project works with a special license type, you can enter the name of the license in the parameters instead of the license key. So if your program contains classes and methods that are not converted by the license type, a dialog will appear. I advise you to use the license key method in every method or event where you also use DynaPDF methods. This can save you a lot of trouble.
If you want to use DynaPDF methods in many scripts of a project, you can also use the set license key global method, which you can call in the app open event. When you charge your programmed files, it is important that you do not hand over your license key to. Now we can finally start with the individual instructions. First, we create a new working environment and save it in our folder item F. This document has no page at the moment. With the method append, we attach a new page. We would like to position the text. For this, we need the size of the page. We get the page high and the page width with methods. By default, the orientation of the coordinates of DynaPDF environments is the lower left corner. That means the higher the coordinates value become in the epsilon axis, we go up the page. For humans, this is more difficult to imagine. Therefore, we can set the coordinate origin with set page chords and the constant key PC top down in the parameters at the upper left corner. In this way, the epsilon coordinates goes from top to bottom. Now we want to set the information of the font with which we want to write the text. We call the method setFont. And define in the parameters the font, in our case times, the style, we want italic, the font size and we can define whether the font is embedded in the document or not. We want it embedded so we type true. Now we want to write the text so we use the method write f text x. In this method we can define where the text should be written. The upper left corner of our text field should be 50 pixels away from the upper and left border. For this we specify the 50 for x and epsilon position in the parameters. Then we define the width and height of the text box. The width of the text field is the page width minus the borders. Then we define the text alignment. For this we have predefined constants in the class. We want a right alignment of the text. For this we enter pdf k new align right. The last parameter is the text itself. We write hello world.
Many methods from the DynaPDF world require a page to be set to editable. Also, the writeFTextX method needs an editable page. The page is already automatically editable by the method append. So we do not have to call the method editPage separately. When the editing of the page is finished, we have to call the method endPage to close the editing. Then we can close the working environment and display the file. Now we can start our project. And we see our document with the text Hello World. Now I want to show you a bigger example. In this example we want to append the terms of conditions to an existing PDF document, add page numbers for the whole document and print a QR code with information about the customer, with customer number, customer name and the customer email address on the right upper corner of the first page. We get the information about the customer from three text files in the interface. Also in the interface is a button that starts the script that we write in a moment. We start in the same way that we show in the first example. After we create an instance of the already known MyDynaPDF MBS class, we can again specify the license key. Then we create a new folder item on the desktop and create our new PDF there. We can then assign new attributes to this file using the setDocInfo method. In this example, I set the title. Now we import the files in the order in which they should appear in the PDF. So first we import our text and then we import the terms and conditions. Both files are separated PDF files that should be merged into the PDF file. Before the actual import we set a few flags. We want to import the pages as pages and not as templates. Also we want to import all page elements like links and bookmarks. We set that information as import flags.
we want to select the first file with an open dialog. Then we need to open the import file with the pass. With the method import pdf file, we import the file. In the parameters we enter 0, because we want to start the import on the first page. If we had already imported pages into the document, these would now be overwritten with the new pages. For example, we can also replace a cover page of a PDF by having this page in a single document and overwriting the page. After the import, we can close the import file. The content of the original file remains unaffected by the import. Now we also need to import the second PDF file, our terms and conditions. This file is located at a fixed address on the desktop. For the import of the terms and conditions, we first need to know how many pages the current project already has. For this we call the method getPageCount. Then we can open the terms and condition PDF. We start the import to the PDF at count plus one. The import is very similar to the previous one. After all pages that we need are now imported, we want to write the page numbers on the pages. For this we run a loop over all pages. In this loop we write the numbers with the already known method whitefttextx. We need the latest page count for our loop. and the page width and height. Again we set the coordinate system origin to the upper left corner of the page. We run the loop over each page.
For the write f text x function, the page must be editable. So we call edit page. And in the parameters, we set our current page. The font this time should be Helvetica, because the text is written in that font too. We want no style this time and the font size 12. Then we write the page number. The page number should be in the lower right corner. For this reason, we set the text alignment to right and place the text field again over the whole page width, with a distance of 50 pixels to the right and to the left. As text we write the number of the current page, which we found in the count variable of our loop. Now we can end the page. And the next page can be then open. So we left our loop. At the end of our example we would like to add a QR code on the first page that contains some data about our customer. We get the data from the text fields on the layout. But the data could also be read, for example, from a database. QR codes can be created directly with methods and properties from the DynaPDF component and insert into a PDF. This has the advantage that the barcode is rendered in the PDF and is not pixelated when zooming in the PDF, as it would be the case when inserting an image. So we edit the first page. And we use an instance of the Dyna PDF barcode 2 MBS class for this purpose. In this object, we can set many properties of the barcode. For example, the barcode type, the content, the type of the content, the color of the barcode and its background, the scaling factor and also barcode specific properties like the ECC level for QR codes in the different option properties. In our case, we set the type to QR code. Then we combine the data from the text field for the content string. Then we set the ECC level to 3 with option 1.
That means the recognition level is very high. And then we set the orientation. This means that the QR code will not be rotated. The other values of the QR code are still default values. Then the barcode can be inserted into our PDF with the insert barcode method from the DynaPDF MBS class. We specify the position, the size, the alignment, and then the object we just created. Then we end the editing. Finally, we close the PDF file and launch it. Now our example is ready and we can test it. And here we see our document. We have our QR code on the first page. Then we have our invoice document. And our terms and conditions. And on the right side we have our page numbers. But the DynaPDF functionalities can do much more. What they can do, you can read in the documentation or you can see from our examples that are included in the plugin download. Here you can find a lot of examples that shows you the possibilities. For example, you find projects that show how you can extract images or text, convert a PDF to PDFA, add watermarks or annotations and so on. If you have any question or would like to purchase a license, you can contact us. I hope you enjoy the Dyna PDF functionalities.